Hey, it's Vanessa, the Crafty Gemini. I post weekly videos right here on my YouTube channel. And in this video tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to make a super quick and easy yoga mat bag, complete with a strap for you to take to your classes. over the supplies you'll need to create this project. First, you're gonna need your yoga mat, of course, all rolled up. I'm gonna show you how to make a bag for it custom to the measurements. I am still gonna leave a little space so that if you are gonna make this project to give as a gift to someone, most likely the chances are that they'll be able to fit their yoga mat in it as well because it'll be on the bigger side, okay? You're gonna need a measuring tape because we're gonna be taking the custom measurements of our actual yoga mat. Make sure you have pen and paper to jot down those measurements. Then for cutting things, you're gonna need a rotary cutter and the corresponding cutting mat, or if you don't have that, you can always get away with a pair of scissors as well. For the drawstring part and the closure of the bag, we are gonna use some drawstring. And you can buy this stuff by the yard at your local fabric store, it comes in different colors. You can also create your own out of strips of fabric, or if you want the super quick and easy route, just pick up some ribbon that you like. Then we have our basic sewing supplies, you know, a working sewing machine, some pins, something to mark your fabric with. You're also gonna need a large safety pin. This will help us feed the drawstring in through the casing we'll create on the bag. And then, of course, your rulers and things like that for the measurements, an ironing board and an iron. And then let's go over the different fabric options that we have for this project as well. So when it comes to fabrics, for this project, since I'm not lining it, I want to select the fabric that already has some body to it and is pretty medium weight. I would not use a quilting cotton for this project just because I'm doing it one layer. I'm not dealing with interfacing or anything like that and it's just gonna be too flimsy. But here are a few different options to consider. A lightweight denim like this, you see kind of how it has some body and stays in shape to it would be great for this. Here's a, a home decor weight fabric that you can pick up at your fabric store. It still drapes nicely, but it has some body to it on its own. I'm gonna be using this organic cotton home deck weight fabric that is just gorgeous, I think. And one fabric that you could use, but I don't recommend it for this project is this canvas. It's kind of stiff like canvas and duck cloth, you could use it, it's gonna be thicker. You're gonna need a more heavyweight sewing machine to get through all the layers as well. And it's just a little bit too stiff for my liking. So just pick up some home decor weight fabric at your local fabric store. And about a yard is going to be plenty if you're gonna make it out of the same fabric, like the bag itself and the shoulder strap. All right, so let's get started. So now we can roll up our yoga mat and let's take some measurements, all right? First, we're gonna measure the length of this thing. Take your measuring tape, measure from one end to the other, and mine is about 24 inches. So you can jot that measurement down. Length is 24 inches, and we're gonna add four inches to that measurement. We're adding that because we need to account for seam allowance here. A casing that we're gonna be making for the drawstring at the top, all right? And we don't want it to be that snug on it either, so give yourself some working room there. So we're add four inches to that. And now let's take the circumference of this thing. So I'm just gonna take my measuring tape and pull it around. And this one is about 14 and a half. And you wanna roll up the mat just like you would after you finish a class. Don't roll it super, super tight and then make the bag too narrow so that normally it won't be able to fit. Leave it a little bit rolled up on the looser end, that way you have enough space in your bag, okay? To slide it in easily, that is. So this one measures about 14 and 5 eighths. We're just gonna say 15. You can always round up, better for it to be bigger than smaller. So the circumference, we're gonna say is 15 inches. All right, so to that measurement, we are actually going to use that measurement to cut out a circle out of our fabric. So actually, let's start cutting out our fabric right now. So the length measurement we said was 24. We added four inches to that. Now we end up with 28 inches. So we're gonna need to cut our fabric 28 inches. And then the circumference, meaning coming around here, is 15 inches. And so to that measurement, let's go ahead and add three inches. That's going to account for the seam allowance and then give us also some room for the bag to slide in through a little bit easier. And don't worry about it being bigger because with the drawstring closure, we're gonna cinch it up and it will still close fine. So that's 18 inches. So we need to cut out a piece of fabric that measures 28 inches by 18. Okay, makes sense? Length, the circumference, and that's gonna be the piece of fabric that's gonna drape around here. 
So here I have a chunk of my fabric. This is less than a yard. You can see I've cut it at 28 inches, which is the length measurement I needed. And just so you guys can start visualizing this, let's put the yoga mat on it. You can see that the length is fine. I should have space here and here to account for that casing and then also for our seam allowances. So that's looking good. Now the other measurement that we said was the circumference, right? Around the yoga mat on the round side. And we added three inches to that. So now I need to come back here and cut the other dimension at 18 inches. And I just need one piece of fabric since this is heavier weight fabric, okay? So here I have my fabric piece cut 28 inches by 18, all right? So this is gonna make up the body of the bag, all right? So now we need to come up with the bottom part here and to cut out our strap as well. So let's do that next. So from the excess I had here, from that same cut, we are going to go ahead and cut a five inch strip and you can make this, usually you'd like to see it be the same length as your bag. So on that measurement, so I'm gonna take the same measurement. So this strap is gonna be five inches wide by whatever that cut length measurement is, all right? And you can make this longer or shorter. It's gonna be up to you. If you want to make a cross body strap, then it will definitely have to be longer than this. But this is one that's just going to be fine enough for you to throw over the shoulder, okay? So we'll measure five inches here. And cut a strip. So five inches by the same 28. This will be for my strap. All right, so let's grab the yoga mat and take another measurement here for the circle bottom part. Now, you can go ahead and use the circumference and figure out using the pi formula and all that to figure out how big you need to make your circle, but we're gonna make it a little bit easier by grabbing the actual yoga mat. So here it is, we have this round end. I'm going to take my ruler and measure the diameter. So from one end to the other of this circle here that we have on the end. And for me, that measures a little over four and a half. So I'm gonna round up to five. Now to five inches, I'm gonna go ahead and add an additional inch to account for my seam allowance and make sure I have space for everything. So we're gonna say six inches. That means I need to cut out a circle that is six inches in diameter, right? Now to do that, if you have a six inch saucer plate or something else that measures six inches in diameter, then you can use that. Otherwise, you can whip out your handy dandy compass like I have here. You can cut this out of fabric or poster board and make yourself a template if you want to, or you can just cut it right on the fabric. So for me, I'm just gonna cut it straight out the fabric. So if I need it to be six inches in diameter, that means I need to set the radius here at half of that is three. And I'm just gonna come into a corner of my fabric, make sure I'm not wasting too much fabric. And yep, that's gonna get me all around. So I'm going to use my little pencil and draw myself a six inch circle. So the pencil line was kind of faint, so I just went in here with a marking pen, just hopefully you guys can see that just a little bit, just so you can see, so that's a six inch uh, circle. And then we're gonna come in here with scissors and cut around it. And it doesn't have to be super perfect, okay? All right, so you should have three pieces of fabric. One is for the main body piece. Remember, it was the length. We added four inches, then the circumference plus three inches, and we got those dimensions. This is for our strap. We said five inches by the same length that we cut out for the body of the bag. And then we have our circle here that we already did to six inches. So let's prep our strap. We're gonna grab our iron and ironing board, lay the fabric, pretty side of the fabric facing down, and we're gonna fold this in half lengthwise and press. And then you can go back, open this on that fold line that you did here, and we're gonna fold it in and this top edge in as well and press. And once you have that, we're gonna refold it right down the center on that initial fold line again. Like this. And that's gonna be our nice and sturdy strap. Now set that aside so we can take it to the sewing machine all at one time, but you are gonna be stitching this open edge shut, but we'll set that aside for now. Now let's move on to this main body piece. 
on one of the short edges, all right, so I have it lengthwise this way, this is going to be the, one of the short ends, we're going to make the casing for our drawstring to go through. So lay the fabric again, pretty side facing down, and you're going to fold this over about half of an inch, this doesn't have to be exact, half an inch, three quarters of an inch, you know, make it a little bit wider depending on how wide or how thick your drawstring or ribbon is. And we added four inches, so you should still have plenty here. Plenty of wiggle room, that is. Once you fold that once, go ahead and repeat it. Now just note that I'm giving you guys the quickie route of doing this. So after we put in the drawstring, there are going to be some raw edges here, but you can go back and add some fray check or just leave it like that. It's really not going to unravel the whole project, but we are going to leave it like that for now. So now let's go to the sewing machine and we're going to stitch this down. We're going to stitch close to this bottom edge here to create the casing for our drawstring. And then we're also going to stitch our strap down. Definitely on this side to keep this closing shut and then you can also go ahead and add another line of stitching So it's even on both sides of top stitching to this edge So I have my strap done and top stitch into place and here's the hem that we created for the casing on the body of our bag So now let's insert the strap here so we can start stitching the whole thing up and the edges are raw here But don't worry because we're going to tuck them in if this is where the casing is going to be for the drawstring You want to come down about an inch or so and then go ahead and put your strap there and notice I'm putting it in a little bit further so I can make sure that in the seam allowance I catch everything and I'm going to put a uh, clip there because this fabric is a little bit thicker better to than using pins and I'll include a link in the description box below on where you guys can pick up these clips They're my favorite when I'm working with bulkier fabrics and then I'm gonna bring the strap across this way and Get it to go all the way down here to the bottom. We are gonna stitch this all up So really it's not gonna matter too much where you put this so just turn it in there a little bit Get it close to the edge And we're gonna put a clip there as well then, let's scoot this back, I'm going to bring the other end of this over this way, okay? So pretty sides of everything should be on the inside. We're catching the ends of the strap inside here. And I'll remove this clip and reclip it into place. So I have all my three layers caught there. Put a couple of clips here because we're going to stitch that side up. And we're going to do the same thing here. So I'm clipping through all my layers. Make sure you're catching that strap all the way in that seam allowance. You can twist it and turn it if you have to, to get it to fit in there, no problem. Now what you want to do is you're not going to start stitching all the way from the top. These are the raw edges that are going to stay open so we can put our drawstring in there. So now we're going to start right from underneath this hem, backstitch to secure it, and we're going to come all the way down using just your presser foot as your guide or about a half of an inch seam allowance it would work as well. So now that that's done, you can go back in here with a zigzag stitch. I'm going to trim away this excess um, strap that I have here. If you have a serger, you can finish off that edge. If you have a zigzag stitch on your machine, you can go back and finish it up, but you don't have to. Nothing's going to happen. It's not going to come apart. So now what we need to do is just close off the bottom here. And for the bottom, this is where we put in our circle. And so this part can be a little tricky if you've never done this before, but here's how I like to do it. For this, I do go ahead and whip out my pins because it allows me to be a little bit more precise. So I'm going to put this like this. This is the pretty side of the bag or the body of the bag fabric should be inside here. And then I'm going to put the pretty side of the circle facing in. So I should just be looking at the wrong sides of the fabric. All right. And I'm just going to start pinning on one side. You can definitely fold this in quarters and do all that to get it super precise. But for this type of a project, it's really not necessary. I'm just going to pin on one side, pin on the other, and then just work my way around putting some pins so that I'm matching up the raw edges like this. And of course, the more pins you put, the more precise it's going to be. And if this is your first time doing something like this, I'm just showing you here how I put so many pins in. I normally wouldn't put that many, but if it's your first time, go ahead and put a bunch to try and keep everything steady while you sew. If you get a few puckers, don't worry about it. It's going to be at the bottom of the bag and nobody's going to notice. All right. So now let's head over to the sewing machine again and I stitched, I put the pins on the circle side of it. So that is how I'm going to stitch it. I'm going to stitch it so that it's stitching through this way, not from the underside. All right, I'll show you. 
I just find that it's easier for me to feed it in this way. So I'm just going to be working my fingers down, making sure that the fabric is nice and flat. And again, using my same seam allowance, whatever I've been using, the edge of my foot as a, as a guide. And we did allow for a little bit more movement in here. So if your seam allowance isn't perfect, don't freak out. The project will still turn out fine. So I just stitch a little bit and kind of ease the fabric in as I go, making sure I'm only catching two layers of fabric underneath. All right. Keep it as flat as you can. Try to keep the fabric as flat as you can with your fingers. And there are going to be some ripples. Don't worry about it. For this type of, of a project, it's really not super perfect. And we kind of eyeballed it. If you do want to get it to fit nice and perfect, then go ahead. You know, you'll have to use the formula to get the exact diameter that you need based on the circumference of your yoga mat. But again, super easy project. It'll turn out just fine for you this way. All right, and I'm back here to the beginning. So let me backstitch. And you can see that our circle is sewn to the bag of the fabric. It's not that hard and it only will take you a minute or two. Just slow down, take your time, and it, I think it will give the bag an overall better look with that round bottom. So for the drawstring, I'm going to just go ahead and cut out one yard. It's going to be more than enough, but we'll do that because this is just like a real simple, simple closure. And actually, before I cut this, let me show you all a trick for cutting drawstring. Before you make the cut, grab a little piece of clear tape, washi tape, whatever you have on hand, and just roll it around the drawstring and then make your cut in the middle and that will keep both ends from fraying. So the next time I need that, that's done. And for this one, it's done here. This edge actually is where they cut it from the store. So it's not finished. So let me finish that off real quick. I'm going to trim that off. So I'm going to come down a little bit further, roll my tape around it and then trim that little end off. All right. So for this little closure, it's going to be real simple. So for the drawstring closure, we're just going to grab our big safety pin and it's just going to be a real simple one. It's not one where you're going to pull it like that. Instead, it's just going to allow us to cinch it up a little bit more. Remember, we're keeping this project really basic, but if you have more skills and you want to fancy it up a bit, feel free to do that. We're going to come in here to the sides where it's open and in between the two layers right there, the hem that we did, just slide the safety pin through it and push it all the way through your casing till you come out on the other side. And the drawstring is a fun way. I mean, you can do it with ribbon. You can cut strips of fabric. You can add beads to the ends of it and kind of really make it decorative and make it your own. So I've come out here on the other end. And I can remove my safety pin now. And that's it. My mat is done. If you want, you can tie a knot somewhere closer to the ends here, just so the ends don't slip out on you. So say like right here, that way I know I have enough space to get the bag out, right? When it's opened up, you see how it's not pulling on it. I have enough space to get the, the yoga mat in and out. And then I can always just push it up like this and tie another knot if you want to. But I think it's going to be snug enough where I won't have a problem. Let's grab our yoga mat. Fit it in here and see what we end up with. Oops, it's, it's twisted this way. There we go. And so there it is. I can pull it tight and then tie a little knot here to keep it cinched in like that. Remember what I said about the ends here, they are going to be fraying. So just grab some fray check and dabble it a little bit just on the raw edges so that it doesn't come apart on you, but it's not going to hurt the project. It's just a quicker way of finishing it. Okay. Now let's see down here. We have our strap sewn in. This is a really nice circle bottom to our bag. I think that circle part really adds to it makes everything lay nice and flat. And there is your shoulder strap. 
So that's it for this video tutorial. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, hit this video with a thumbs up below, share it across the different social media sites, and don't forget to click my subscribe button so you won't miss out on any of my future videos. If you give this project a try, you'll save yourself some money for sure, and definitely go ahead and upload a picture to my Facebook page so I can see what you're making from my Crafty Gemini tutorials. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you all next time.